Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Today, we're going to be pulling some annuals and planting multiple hydrangea hedges. Fall planting continues. So here we are right at the edge of our patio, really excited to do this project today. I've been looking forward to it for quite a number of weeks. We're going to be removing this rock and deep purple salvia. This is an annual for us in our area, so it's going to come out anyway. We're going to be transplanting this blonde ambition gamma grass to get it out of the way. And we are replacing it with Tough Stuff Top Fun, a new hydrangea variety from Proven Winners. They sent us some beautiful specimens. They sent us seven of them. They grow about two to three feet tall and wide. Uh, they are hardy in zones four to nine. They prefer full sun to part sun. They have a improved, uh, more reliable reblooming. They're a serrata or mountain hydrangea. They have a dark burgundy stem, improved coloring, and I'm really excited to give this variety a shot in our garden. Christopher, did I forget anything about you know, this new improved tough stuff. Um, no, I think you've covered all the important stuff. What's great about these is they are a little bit more hardy. So we're going to put them in a place where the pergola actually gives them a little bit of respite from the absolute heat of the sun. And it'll be really nice to um, have this intense color up against the patio. Yeah. Oh, and there's a QR code on the back of this. I wonder if you can scan, if you hold your phone up to the TV or whatever app you're viewing this on right now, it'll take you to a website with more information on this shrub. The other cool thing is right now you see these are pink blooms, but this is the type of hydrangea that if we were to add aluminum sulfate to the soil, we could get these to bloom a purplish blue. So these will change color depending on the acidity of the soil. I'm loving the pink right now. I'm always tempted to get them to turn blue, though, because, you know, I love a blue hydrangea. We don't have any blue hydrangeas except the other tough stuffs we planted earlier in the season. So we have annuals, but we also have a couple shrubs. And then, of course, this perennial blue grama grass, which we're not sure where we're putting this yet. Do we have an idea? I know. We haven't even thought about it. We totally forgot that's about all right. it. But it's not working there, that's for sure. But tucked in under these very happy annuals is an Illuminati arch mock orange, which was very tiny and it's trying, it's growing in there. And then there's an additional sublime hydrangea. So the plan for the sublime, that's simple. That's going to go over here in place of this sprinter boxwood to round out this hedge. That's an easy transplant. That boxwood is actually going to go in the same hole the sublime was in. Yeah, they're just switching places. Also, I love the Sublime Hydrangea. I don't know how many times we have to say it, but it is such a great performance. It's called beautiful. Invincible Sublime. It's a newer hydrangea, again, from Proven Winners. And this one's not a great example, but this hedge right here has these beautiful blooms that, I mean, there's some deer damage. They've come through and nibbled off the tips right there of the new buds. But these would all be reblooming right now if we did more to protect them from the deer. But look at these just planted last year. Last fall, these were planted as one gallons, the same size as those tough stuff top funds we're about to plant. And they've grown so much and filled in so beautifully. We're going to add one more. Big fan of Invincible Sublime. Let's move these annuals. Yeah, let's get these ripped out of the ground and start with some transplanting and get a clean slate ready for the Tough Stuff Top Funds. All right, so we're going to transplant this Sublime Hydrangea. This was already transplanted once earlier in the season, so I don't expect it to be too rooted in. But I'm just going to, you know, push aside what little mulch is there for compost. I already have the hole prepped where it's going. We pulled that boxwood out. This. Do you want the tiny shovel? No, oh. I prefer a big shovel. 
this should be good. See, because I want to get as much of the root ball as possible. Check uh, out that root system. It rooted in quite well, considering yeah. it was its second home of the season. Yeah, a lot of surface level roots on hydrangeas. I want those roots to get a little deeper. Oh well, yeah, so that is the Sublime Hydrangea. Christopher, can you throw some biotone in there? Because I'm just going to come over and plop this Sublime in there. I can do that. This is biotone. We like to keep it in these little galvanized buckets because it's easier to transport. Yeah, let me get my kneeling pad because nothing's worse than kneeling on gravel. Yeah, and this isn't actually pea gravel. It's uh, crushed marble or crushed granite, they said. It locks in better so you don't sink as much as you would on regular pea Oopsies. gravel. Oopsies. I just broke a big branch off of this. <laughs> That's okay. Oh. Since it's a smooth hydrangea, we know that it's okay if it's pruned. It will rebound. That is a ridiculous root system. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It looks like it's been here forever. I mean... <laughs> There's not going to be much more with work than that. Well, yeah, I mean, I just have to straighten it out a little bit because it's leaning east right now. Planting hole was good, though. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Now you're with your friends. Yeah, I feel like that works. Yeah, it's going to be really good. Okay, so I got to tuck these roots in. Because a lot of them are superficial on the top of the surface here. It's a good thing we have that five yards of compost still on the driveway, so we'll be able to I know. tuck these in. I mean, that was a perfect fit. See that sprinkler head right there? I have a feeling next year I'll be moving that a couple of feet. Yeah. <laughs> Because these, at their maturity, get about five feet tall and wide. So they're probably a little close right now, but we're impatient. I love having bulk compost sitting on the driveway ready to use. It is so nice. People always ask us, why don't we compost? I think the amount that we use, there's no way we could keep up it. with it. Yeah. I love it. We should get the hose and put that on the slow trickle. Yeah. Yeah, I would even make that less of a trickle before you put it down. There we go. Yeah. I think it's going to be happier here because this garden bed is actually on drip. And it gets to be with its friends. Beautiful. So the sublime hedge is complete. Now there are six sublimes in a row under the weeping red bud. Weeping Ruby Falls red bud. Oh, I love it. All right, now we've got to put this sprinter boxwood in this Here. hole. And I'm going to let Christopher show you how he does this one. That oh, there's hole. that branch. I broke that branch off of that sublime. I oh. wonder if we can make a cutting from it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's illegal, though, so maybe we won't. Make a new one? Yeah. <laughs> so this hole here is not perfectly in line with this sprinter. So what we'll have to do is shift it about eight inches east to get it in line with that sprinter. And that sprinter was a pretty deep hole. And we don't have drip on this bed yet. Getting there. Um, we just planted this bed last year. And so I think this fall, once we pull all these annuals, we're going to put some drip in. And by we, I mean Christopher, because that's his thing. It's important to have 
different yes. specialties in the garden when you've got two people working in it. And the drip, whether or not it's reluctantly, has fallen to me. I think you still need to go a little more towards you. Look at me being a backseat digger. What else is new? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what those roots are from. That's a, oh, you know what? Those look like hollyhock roots. This is where we had that big stand of hollyhock, which I cut down. They had finished blooming and they had terrible powdery mildew and they're now coming back, which is funny. But this is what their roots were, like these big, long, like, is that them? Well, someone messaged me on Instagram this week and they said, how do you keep your verbena venariensis from getting powdery mildew? And I was like, I have no idea. But now as I look at it, I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> That's how we do we it. We do have a little bit of powdery mildew on it. For the first time I've noticed it. Now that she it, asked how we don't have it. I was but like, it well, doesn't, I don't. it's only below. It's, it's been crazy weather this this last couple month. of weeks. It's yeah, been so humid. Month. I think it's 70% humidity right now. I know. All right, I need a little vessel to put some of this soil in and then we'll bring this. I think you over. can put it actually where you're putting it because there's that hole right there where we pulled out that mock orange. Good. Thank and then we're going to top dress everything anyway with compost, so I wouldn't worry about making it too perfect. And hopefully you're better at transporting the boxwood than I was with the sublime without any breakage. First things first, let's oh. just get this in. Oh, he's going so fast. He's so speedy. <laughs> That's a big root ball on that. And what's interesting, it went down so far. Yeah. Oh my wow. God. Wow. Do you need help with that? No. <laughs> Shoot. All right, now if we look from here. Did we go too far back? Yeah, it's too close to you now. I don't know if you can see in the screen, but. It definitely veers towards him right now. So I think two to three inches away from you towards the shovel. Wow. I'm impressed with how those rooted in because when I planted them last summer, they didn't have the greatest root system. I remember you saying that there was nothing attached to some of them. Yeah, some of them I pulled out of the can and they were, the soil just fell away. How's my height? The height looks good. And if it's not right, I'm pruning it. <laughs> now this feels really good. Can you rotate it? Let's see if it's just a rotation thing. Line it up here. I'll try and get lower. Rotate again. Oh, that made it worse. Do a 180. I feel like I can go one more inch. Well, I don't know. Come check. Tell me if I'm crazy, but only about this. That's it. Yep, that works. And the distance is really good too. We didn't really go for super formal with this new space when we planted it, except a few little straight line hedges. And apparently that we, works, right? Let me I check think from it's this great. angle. Yeah, I mean, it works close enough. No one's going to be out here with a ruler because we're just not going to let them do that. So <laughs> could you imagine if someone showed up with a ruler? What knee you pad. looking for? The knee pad. I think it's still over there. Here it is. <laughs> I used my eyes. Ooh, hummingbirds. So we have three hummingbirds that all fly around together and they kind of like play and swirl and do that whole thing. I wonder if one of them's a, a kid, like a baby. That's, that'd be fun. That plant next to this sprinter boxwood is a boomerang purple lilac. Which did bloom around. It did, yeah. It's... All right, this is in. It looks in. It's very in. Now we just have to top dress it with compost. Which we should probably do after 
we after we do the... all this and then we'll do like a final top dressing. Yes. All right. Good job, Christopher. So we played around with the spacing a little bit and this, if we did it 18 inches back, it's too close to the Ancient Mariner Rose. And the Ancient Mariner Rose gets about four to five feet tall and we want it to billow up and over the tough stuff, but we also don't want to smother the tough stuff. So we're going to go with 12 inches, which will give us, if it gets full size, it'll come in another 12 inches here, which is fine because this is not a pathway. Right. Um, so I think that'll work, but... Will it be too close to the Ancient Mariner? I think it's going to be okay. I like when the David Austin shrub roses get up close and personal with other shrubs. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can do that. And also this um, gardener supply trowel is exactly 12 inches. That's why it's just sort of stuck in there. Yeah. Okay. So that's the two foot one. This is the 18 inch one, which if we use the 18 inch one, we can go from the outside of the can to the outside of the can. Perfect. I don't know why I didn't think that through before. So I can leave that can where it is. And then I can take this dowel, put it here and do this. So then we have that, right? So that's our separation. Christopher, can you hand me another tough stuff? Top one, please. Thank you. What do you think? That's it. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Stunning. And the reason that we wouldn't fill in this little spot is because these quick fire fab are going to get quite large. Yeah. But next year, if it is empty, then we would just throw an annual in there. Or we could put some more serendipities in. Serendipities would look really pretty there. That we would... should see if they have any on clearance anywhere. It's the end of yeah. the season. Just put three more. That's actually three serendipities that are one year old. You know what? I love this bluish foliage, this dark foliage with the... This is gonna be so good. All right, everybody, here we go. Our beautiful Tough Stuff top fun hedge. This will be available next year in 2024. I did get it confirmed that the name Tough Stuff Top Fun did come from Top Gun. It's a little play on words. And I did have to be talked down by Eric. I was going to film this entire video in a flight suit and keep saying things like I feel the need for speed. But here we are, tough stuff, top fun, reblooming mountain hydrangea. All right, Christopher, let's admit defeat. We planted four spilled wine wide. Ooh, that's a big spider. <laughs> big one. Um, we planted four spilled wine wide gila here, and then we had a 90 degree heat wave. So as much as we kept up on our watering, we did lose this one. So we're going to pop that out. I think it's lost. It's it might not be, but either way, that's the, that's the sound of death. It's yeah. going. Either um, way, you know, we're not patient people, so we're just going to yank it. Yeah, and we have this beautiful Illuminati tower that didn't get to grow as much as it could have because it was squashed underneath all those rock and deep purple. This is a really beautiful summer blooming plant that will spring get, blooming. Spring blooming. Yeah, spring blooming, sorry. Beautiful white blooms. They have a beautiful fragrance, so it'll be nice to have on the edge of the border. It can get five to six feet tall, three to four wide. And that three foot wide is how we kind of plan this spot. So this will be okay. It'll be um, a nice compliment to the purple pillar rose of Sharon. Oh yeah, it's finally blooming. Blooming the first week of September, which is pretty late. But um, it's budded up. 
It's probably because I didn't put this bed on drip. We now know it's going on drip in the fall, like we said. So we're going to pop this in the hole. But before we do that, Eric, can you pan over here to these three Eustacea Vi roses that we transplanted and had some feedback of the horror of defoliating them before we transplanted. But look at this. New leaves from the little swollen nodes. This one here even, oh gosh, I'm dirty, has tons of new little leaves coming. More here. So this was a successful transplant. Yep. And they'll be rooted in. They'll have a little bit of growth on them to prepare for winter. And frankly, I will not have to do a lot of trimming on these come springtime. But let's see if this does what I think it's going to do. What? What a shock. What a shock. That that really, that wasn't going to do much And you us. know what? It might not be dead, but it also definitely not pretty. It's, no. <laughs> <laughs> little this, little this. I think that hole is going to have to be bigger, though. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. You got a good two or three inches of depth you got to get in there. Who needs Would you like me to grab you a shovel? Who needs a shovel? That mock orange is going to be so excited to not be buried in the middle of a bed. You know, when you're planting a new bed and everything is so small, sometimes you miscalculate sizing. This is going to work. I think it's going to look great. I think it'll work. I think after you bury that in, we'll top dress with some fresh compost. So our next hydrangea hedge that we are planting is a hedge of Invincible Mini Malvet Hydrangeas. These are hardy in zones four through eight. They get about two and a half to three feet tall and wide. They bloom on new wood. They're a type of smooth hydrangea or Annabelle hydrangea. And the reason we chose these for this spot is we have a beautiful Invincible Garnetta hydrangea here that's suffering from a little deer damage. Um, but Proven Winners no longer produces that one or grows that one. And so the closest uh, recommended to us was this mini Malvette. And so we're going to do a hedge of mini Malvettes to round out this corner. And they are replacing a sedge grass that we had originally planted five years ago that just became much too aggressive and too invasive. So we've pulled out as much of it as we possibly can. There's definitely um, still some in there and we keep pulling it as we see it. But... We'll be fighting it for a while, but as long as we stay on top of it, we'll be okay. All right. So here we have them spaced a little less than 18 inches apart. They can be tighter than the top funds because they don't get quite as big. And I think in general with arborescence, smooth hydrangeas, we do kind of pack them in a little bit so we get that really lush look. We raised this area up with some compost a few weeks ago to direct some of the water since it comes down the berm um, away from this spot. And it hasn't been washing away the compost, which is exactly what we wanted. After we're done planting, I'm going to tighten this edge up a little bit. And I think they're going to look absolutely beautiful in this spot. They'll start blooming on the early side with those purpley pink mauve blooms and be a pretty continuous rebloomer throughout the season. So this we know is mostly compost, so it should be pretty easy to plant in. But I'm going to do my little squeeze and press trick. I might even just be able to dig this with my hand, but I'm not going to. Yeah, I mean, this is just mostly compost right now. That's all settled from the rain. It should be very happy. Maybe not as much biotone necessary for these. <laughs> Too much biotone. Is that a thing? Well, let's do one big handful. Now we have beautiful specimens from these actually got sent to us. That's a little low little or low. a little high from um, Garden Crossings. Beautiful specimens from Garden Crossings. So thank you, Proven Winners and Garden Crossings for that. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. So healthy. I mean, these got shipped in the mail. If you can believe it. We don't want to pile it up too high around the crown. Yeah, gorgeous. All right, we'll do the rest. So they look good. 
raised up a little bit like that. I think it'll be nice with the clean compost below it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Looks good. Now, Christopher, you know what you have to do. What's that? Oh, no. Yeah, I'm leaving. Your turn. I did it in the last video. <laughs> I'm leaving the gloves on, though. Last time, you did it without the gloves. Yeah, and that's true. That was on you. So this hours. is, wait, let's show them what it is. It's Liquid disgusting. Fence. It smells so gross. But I think because these are brand new. Oh, don't get downwind. Oh, I like that the stream so far. I know. This is actually a good setup for it. Huh. Oh, it smells so gross. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. Well, we got two beautiful hydrangea hedges planted today, a Tough Stuff Top Fun hedge and an Invincible Mini Wild that hedge. And there's more hydrangea planting to come. So, you know, make sure you check back in a future video. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow From E5B. Thanks for growing with us.